Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first Midst <laughs> Roundtable. My name's Sam Regal. And I'm Marisha Ray. And tonight we're going to reach out to the three brilliant creators of Midst via this teletheric transducer. Ooh. Look at that. I don't know. Straight from the world. I'm not going to turn it I'm, on yet. I'm afraid I'm going to break it. Um, for those of you unfamiliar with Midst, it's an immersive, semi-improvised sci-fi fantasy podcast recounted by a trio of mischievous narrators. The series is a surreal and reality-bending story about a crotchety outlaw, a struggling cultist, and a diabolical bastard, Ooh. making awful decisions in a world on the edge of disaster. And now, spoiler warning for anyone not yet caught up on season one of Midst, or if you missed our Midst Marathon on Twitch. Missed say that. Midst Marathon. Say that five times fast. Midst or Midst Marathon, Marathon on, on Twitch. Twitch. Wow, that's up. A- Tonight's discussion may involve spoilers, but, uh, you know, for all the plot of season one, but you can catch all of season one right now. Yeah, it's, it's all, all out. out. Go see it, yeah. or hear it, or both. Yeah, see and you, hear you it. can do both. Um, and guess what? Season two of Midst comes out next week. Mm-hmm. That's right. Season two is coming out on August 23rd to Midst.co, the Critical Role YouTube channel, and everywhere you listen to podcasts. Yeah. Subscribers, please subscribe. Subscribers will get the first three episodes right away. Heck yeah. If you don't subscribe, you'll still get to hear them, but not right away. (laughs) Um, New episodes will be uh, available every Wednesday. Okay, I think we've gotten all of the talking points done. Now we can go straight to the meat. Uh, Let's meet the creators Mm -hmm. of Midst. Um, <laughs> let's turn on the teletheric. Okay. All right, how does do this I, thing work? Do I, I think just, we, do I don't, please don't, please don't, don't touch. You're gonna break it. I don't wanna I'm, 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 I'm hearing things. Oh. Oh. Can, can you hear us? Yes. We can. I think, I think something's coming through. How did you, how did you get this number? Oh. Are you connected to the correct universe? Oh. <laughs> Where I is this coming so. from? Is this please, Alexandria? Please don't hang up. We are not trying to sell you anything. I don't even know if this device can hang up, so so we are stuck here. Yeah, this is maybe on permanently now, so we're all in for a ride. It is very futuristic technology. <laughs> they forgot an off button. Even though it looks so old, but yeah, so well, very you know, new. In intercosmos stuff, you don't. You, one does not turn off a teletheric transducer. <laughs> um, well, welcome creators. Welcome third person. Um, Maybe let's start by. Could you just introduce yourselves to the to the the viewing public? I, you're mysterious and, and shrouded in, in secrecy. I know. Oh, please tell us about yourselves. So anonymous. Well, I guess we can make a special exception for you. Yeah, we're not. And we don't usually watching. do this. <laughs> Who goes first? What do we do? <laughs> oh, I love it. We're shy. That's why we're anonymous. We're shy. We're still shy. But we can we can disclose our names to you. Uh, my name is Zen. That's Zen spelled with an X, X E N. I use they, them pronouns. And I'm Sarah, she, her pronouns. And I am Matt. I use he, him pronouns. And it's a delight to hang out with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. so, yeah. so happy to, to be uh, here. So One to cosmos to another. Hear you. Hear you. <laughs> yeah, again. Yes. We've um, been listening to your voices so much that uh, it's. It's like your old friends. Yeah. yeah. Aww. Aww. It's a warm and fuzzy blanket. Yeah. It's touching. Um, That's so, so sweet. So tonight we're gonna like delve into some some. Oh, we're gonna delve into some drinks first. First oh, and sorry. foremost. It's been sitting we're, here. We're and on the radio. We can't yet. see you. Are you, you drinking oh, something? Yeah. Please we explain. Are. Describe. We're drinking a, <laughs> do a, a podcast style description Ooh, of what you're doing right now. Is okay. It? So Marisha mm. has in her hand. Uh, a delectable uh, cocktail beverage. It's purple Ooh. and um, uh, imperceptible. You, you can't see yes. through it. Yeah, but a uh, glowing. That ab- sounds familiar. Above the the per- the the darkish brackish um, water is is a, is a singular beautiful orange globe of light and hope. almost seeming to float in the dark fluid like substance. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. Is, is that That's so beautiful, Sam? Is that some sort of metaphor or? Or simile? <laughs> <laughs> Who could possibly say? Does it taste oh. good? Oh, that it is does good. Taste good. You, you three uh, invented this drink, right? <laughs> yes, we did. We did. Yes. Uh, that's a mids teeny you've got, I believe. Amazing. So we're, good. Well, we're going to post the recipe online. Mm-hmm. It's actually really good. Um, but yeah, tonight we're going to be delving into all things midst, and um, we want to get uh, to know you three better, but also uh, introduce the show to people who haven't heard it yet. 
um, and maybe uh, get deeper into it for those of, of our audience who have heard it. Yeah, um, so let's just start by uh, by asking, how would you three describe Midst? Um, maybe maybe you could describe it in three words. Yeah, there's three of you. Mm. We do like oh, trees. So hang on, do yeah. we each choose one word or do we each individually get to pick three words? Mm. I mean, well, one I have, is harder than the words. other. Let's do all, all three of you pick three words, yeah. making nine total. That's great. <laughs> okay, great. so describe Midst in, in nine words. Yes. Got it. Um, I'll say Midst is a fun, weird sound. Fun, weird sound. Okay, okay. That's great. Sarah? Uh, for me, I would say experimental. Um, immersive and personal. Mm. Mm. And Matt? Yeah, I, let's see, I think if I had to boil it down, I would say freaky <laughs> sci fi <Ooh>. story. Story is a cop out. Choices are also a cop out. <laughs> I love it. Well, if, if no one's tasted it before sure, sure, sure. give it's them a, a sense story. of what no. they're getting into yeah. are you <laughs> some kind of a storyteller oh, I'm all. <laughs> i love it i love it um uh those were great those are great words yeah how would you describe Thank you. it in three, in three words. words yeah um i would say uh did they say mysterious i can't remember no no that's oh, not so. taken that's yet. on um, the table mysterious futuristic mm. past <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I bailed. Also I weird. Bailed. Yeah. <laughs> I would say. I love the inner conflict. <laughs> I would say it's like an audio acid trip. Ooh. Oh, I love that one. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's flattering. <laughs> Creative director. <laughs> Kirby <Kirishawins>. wins. <laughs> <laughs> New tagline. <laughs> uh, don't do drugs. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's get into the backstory of um, of just the how of it all. How how did we all end up here? Um, mm -hmm. How did Critical Role and Midst become a union, uh, a, a partnership, a, a joint? Well, we are Don't asking ourselves that question every moment of every day since this became a reality. Um, <laughs> It, it still doesn't seem quite real, but it really didn't seem real back when it first happened and you guys first reached out to us. Yeah, speaking of acid trips, it's been it's been an impossibly wild adventure. It was like a giant hand reached down out of the sky and asked if, asked us if we wanted to hitch a ride. And we were like, uh, sure. But we couldn't actually believe the giant hand had ever heard of us, much less had listened to our podcast. So it was pretty cool. Yeah, and I guess on our side, you and uh, one of our amazing uh, employees over here, biz dev guy, Ben, kind of discovered it first. Did Ben discover it first or did you? Ben discovered it first and sent it to me, uh, sent me the, the, uh, some, the first couple episodes of the podcast and I was walking my dog, Rigatoni. That's right. And I listened, oh, I listened <laughs> yeah, I listened to the first two episodes on my dog walk and by the end of the dog walk, I called Ben uh, and I was like, this is perfect. Yeah. This is amazing. It's it's us. And then, it's us. That's right. Um, Whoa. Because and it really perfect. felt like it was um, the story is captivating. The characters are really cool and interesting, and the world is unlike anything I had ever heard before. But also, you can tell by listening to it that it's friends making up a story together, and it just felt like the early days of Critical Role and how um, we all got together and decided to make something together and it, uh, mm. and it turned into a much bigger story than we ever expected. And it just felt, I got those vibes from, from listening to your three uh, delectable voices. And, yeah. Um, Whoa. Oh, thank you for telling that story. Yeah. I, remember, uh, I remember you then being like, hey, you have to listen to this because I think we should, we should do something with them. And I remember the first thing that you said was like, it's really weird. <laughs> there's, it's narrated, but there's three of them. Yeah, and sometimes they disagree with each other. Yeah, and I was like, what? <laughs> and it was, yeah. yeah. It was like one of my favorite things about it though, because I, I love the disagreement to me. It just shows that like collaborative yeah. element to it mm -hmm. in real time, which and, is great. And to that end, um, 
uh, regardless of how you know we found you and you found us, how did you start doing this? Like, what was it? Was it a game? Was it a, a a story experiment? Was it a writing workshop? Was it an acid trip? <laughs> <laughs> we would never do drugs, Sam, or condone the use of same. No. But that is a great question. Um, we met in school. We all went to college together, and in kind of that way that, uh, you know, in a creative writing class, you might identify someone else as you're reading various stories who, uh, you know, really leans into that freaky genre fiction. Uh, same saw same. And uh, we spotted each other across the room and we're like, you know, I want to know, I want to know those people. Let's, let's hang out. So we started, you know, getting together, playing some games uh, where we would in that role-playing way, create universes together. I mean, the story that you were sharing, Sam, about Critical Role felt so familiar to us as far as creating that that shared universe together. What mm -hmm. is that? Uh, paracosm? A paracosm. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Um, we weren't playing... It, it, well, a paracosm? It's... It doesn't it mean like a shared fictional universe yeah. or something? I don't know if it necessarily means shared, but it means uh, an intricate um, imaginary world a uh, paracosm. We'll yeah. put the yeah. definition wow. up on the screen. It's good. It's a good yeah. word. The definition it's a good word. is whatever it says on the screen right now. Great. Great. Oh. And I knew it all along. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just started kind of throwing those together. Some of it was to sort of see what kinds of tales we wanted to share, what we thought might delight the others. Um, These were small games, just the three of us. So one game master and two mm -hmm. players. And for the most part, they were all systemless. Um, so no dice, no character sheets, um, just just a, a shared buy-in to a few hours of vivid hallucinating. <laughs> no, no, no drugs. Again. Yeah. And we've played a lot of games together over the years, most of them kind of original, one-of-a-kind, systemless, story-based, kind of freewheeling, improv, group storytelling games. Mm -hmm. uh, and Midst was one of those games. Yeah. It began as a experiment to see if we could create a game together that we all three simultaneously game mastered and simultaneously played. And it was a cool little game. We played a few sessions of it, but afterward we realized, you know what, this seems like it could be something bigger. How do we share this with people and what format could we do that in? So mm -hmm. a uh, major uh, blockbuster movie was not on the table. So <laughs> podcast was the next most available option to us. So Midst became a podcast. That's so cool. And so you were playing this as a, as a game did it have rules and structure like or was it just it basically it was mostly vibes vibes, <laughs> yeah, vibes yeah. are usually our, our game mechanic um we did start with a pretty well fleshed out setting um the oh. setting came before any kind of characters any kind of plot it was um the islet of midst the the town of stationary hill and we just kind of built it out from there slowly expanding our horizons well you know, what lies above, what lies below, what if the physics were like this? Yeah, it, we kind of treated it like a group of friends all coming to the same sandbox together, but we all brought different toys, I guess, like different things that we were passionate about that we wanted to use in the course of telling this story. So uh, like as an example, I remember early on, I, it, 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 sorry, we had this idea of bureaucracy horror as being something we wanted to incorporate so hence the trust and that was that was my toy that i brought to the sandbox mm -hmm. it was just an excuse for us to throw as many of the things that we're passionate about into the same story as possible and kind of jumping off of that you guys alluded that you have played in other worlds and other with other themes what made you all really like start to cement yourself in this kind of sci-fi western anti-capitalism horror <laughs> as you mentioned matt i don't think we picked themes out at the beginning they just kind of naturally arose out of all the ingredients that we threw in the cauldron um like the anti-capitalism thing was more just a way to process <laughs> and um, deal with our experience as millennials in a you know, capitalist world. Yeah. Um, I know how yeah. millennials are. It just, it just kind of ends up in stories somehow. <laughs> yeah, and and the uh, the Western angle was, 
No, we certainly we don't have any feelings about capitalism over here. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, the Western angle was kind of an accident. We were, you know, throwing themes together and at some point kind of looked at each other and realized, wait a second, are we making a like a Western? What is going on? Is this a Western? Is it looks a Western an awful now? lot like a Western. <laughs> but no, it was never a goal. Uh, but we've we've since discovered that kind of by accident, it is a space Western. That's yeah, so cool. that's great. Kind of backtracking it, a little bit. Yeah, go on. Just, you know, kind of talking about how all of us, you know, we um, had our own little little date before we all jumped in together. Yeah, we talked on, on Zoom a couple times and we yes. met in person a couple times. Yes. And, and then, we, mm -hmm. then we embarked on this adventure together. Yeah. Did you guys, um, I mean, we understand being on the critical role side of things when you you get very attached and you're very protective over something that you have built together and you want to maintain that autonomy and control. Um, so what was it like when you guys decided to join forces with critical role? Did you guys have any, were there any any reservations, any cold feet, any anything? I that mean yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. I, isn't that part of the artistic experience? Sure. Like the the fear of of selling out and also the fear of being exploited by a heartless corporation? Yeah, that's us. Um, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I mean, we didn't know you at the time. Yeah. But now we do, and the choice has been made very evidently. Uh, it's a very good one. Yes. For many I mean, reasons. truly, we, we had a lot of uh, fears and stresses along the way, but every step of the process every member of the critical role team that we've had the pleasure of working with has been so kind and so uh, making us feel so involved and so heard and so validated every step of the way and i'm not just saying that because we're guests on your show and you've <laughs> imprisoned us in this wooden box <laughs> i really mean that um it's it's a delight working with all of you um yeah that's so kind that's so nice to hear and it's been so uh, wonderful and rewarding to to work with you three as well, and yeah. um, and to like, you know, I think at, at our heart, everyone here um, in front of the camera and behind the scenes really just loves telling stories and hearing stories, and the passion that you three throw into this project um, is it's addictive. Like yeah. the drugs that we don't do. Yeah. Um, but like, this is watch out. This is becoming a theme. This is becoming yeah. a whole. <laughs> um, but like, it's it's really great to to be inspired. Like, you know, uh, we've been telling tales of Exandria and other things for many years now, and it's so great to get um, some new perspectives and new points of view yeah. and new ways of telling stories uh, within these these walls. Um, and it's 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 inspired me, and I think a lot of people mm -hmm. here to like um, to think of just sort of outside, outside the box the ways box, yeah. of telling stories. And well, thanks, so thank yeah. you for that. I remember too. Well, that's part of what. Oh, go ahead. I, I just remember a lot of when we brought you guys on board, and having that fear of being like, we don't we don't want to break it. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. don't <laughs> want to mess it up. We love what it is, so we just want to want to take it and just like sprinkle resources on it and just let them go <laughs> yeah, and just totally. keep doing their thing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's very much uh, our experience of what's Ooh, happening. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, the degree to which you all have been conscious of, and you're familiar with this story yourselves, you know, mm -hmm. creating a very personal creative product and then realizing that there are outside forces that might try to manipulate it or control it or affect it. So yeah. your attention to not applying those forces to mids, to allowing mids to be what it is in the way that it is in the way that we want to make it without modifying or affecting that really means a lot to us and is a big part of why we why we uh, chose to join forces the way oh, we did. that's great. I have lots of ideas for the next season, by the way. Oh, yeah, we, we have notes. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> We've seen some of them. They're uh, interesting. No. <laughs> we'll take them under advisement. <laughs> I, I think the mock weep pie eating contest could be really fun. <laughs> Sam, we've gone over this. It's just pie like, doesn't exist in you the and, you and the pies. I just think it would be a fun side quest. That's all. Well, anyway. we'll talk about it. Um, so you started this off as uh, three frenzies, uh, playing this game that was made with vibes. And then you, at some point you were like, you know what, we should record this. We should make this into a thing that we yeah. put out for the world. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the process of uh, transforming it from 
uh, three friends sitting around a table to three friends sitting around a table with microphones. How did that, how did that go? Well, it was quite a process. Um, at the time that we released Midst originally, the first time, it had been cooking in our brains for... About seven years. Wow. Yeah. The, the original seven seeds years. for Midst. Yeah. Not constantly. Like, right. uh, life got in the way a lot, but mm -hmm. it was always there in the background. Yeah. The very original seeds for Midst for us were kind of right around like 2013. At least that's the date on oh, our very dang. first note when oh, we cool. were getting together, putting things. That's when we started writing stuff down and dating them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, 2012. Yeah. So kind of around the same time. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, um, but to answer your question, we spent a lot of time really just finding our voice. We did a lot of recording tests. Uh, it wasn't actually episode one, but episode two that was our guinea pig mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. of trying out different methods, different ways of being narrators. And it it was a struggle at first. There were a lot of misses. I know, it's nice, right? I know, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Um, yeah. What's so happening? Are you, you admiring looking... our chassis? Yeah, <laughs> the, the teletheric <laughs> device is Our eyes cool. are up here. It is really... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a lot of influence. There, there are many podcasts and many audio dramas mm -hmm. out there in the world, and the big uh, challenge we had was kind of just learning to accept that we should really do midst our way and not in some other way that we thought we should do it because this is, you know, quote unquote, the way it should be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there are a lot of traditions and a lot of conventions around audio drama, around radio, around radio theater. And we love radio theater. We were fans of old radio theater and new radio theater and audio dramas. So, so a big part of our process was realizing that like, we have been trying to do it the way we think we're supposed to do it, and it's not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, what's wrong here? How, how do we fix this? To kind of evoke the question about fears, I think shyness was a big one for us and continues to be, hence why we're in this box and oh, you know, yeah. the, the way we are. But uh, the, the first recordings that we did it was just, you know, how do we how do we do this? How do we put our voice to this story? We had numerous takes where we were kind of trying different methods, different voices, mm -hmm. styles of narration. We'd spent so long planning it and imagining it. And then when we actually tried to bring it into fruition, it just felt flat until one of us, I forget who at this point, had the brilliant idea of, well, what if it just wasn't perfect? What if we just kind yeah. of... Uh, all talked at once in this chaos three-headed dragon jumble and we just rolled with it and what if that was just fine i love it and yeah. that's the that's the best that's, part that is the, the best part <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i just remember the first few episodes and and hearing like sometimes more than one of you will voice a character. Yeah. Sometimes mid mid sentence mm. or, or or you know sentence to sentence, the character yeah. will still be speaking, but but it will the narrator will will shift, um, and that's so cool. And it's not always Zen doing the voice of Mach Weep, and it's not always. Oh, it is well, actually that is that one is <laughs> the one rule I guess that's that we've the established in midst is that we each only voice our own primary protagonist. It's a secondary so, character. And who's yours? Sure. So um, I, as Matt, voice Phineas Thatch, everyone's favorite struggling cultist. <laughs> and I voice Lark. Uh, and I voice Mock Weep. But other than that, everyone is free game. That's and right. like you said, okay. we will steal characters and yes. sentences from each other willy-nilly. I love it. It does, it gives it this feeling of that it's not about you all as narrators or individual people it is about the story mm -hmm. that you're telling and it also gives this this element of alternating perspectives how you can have like a singular story but depending on who is driving at the time you know perspectives are subjective so that's mm -hmm. what i think i really i really enjoy about it yeah it's like a Instead of choose your own adventure, it's like a choose your own perspective. Ooh. I'm so glad that. you said that. That's wonderful. And one quick uh, side detail here. It is a choose your own adventure for us, too, because uh, Midst is mostly improvised. We've yeah. gotten a few questions about how it is written or scripted or how we yeah, write how, out the how episodes. Is it? How, how is it? It is, it, is, it is not. Midst is loosely outlined, and then all of its performance is improvised on the fly. The, the narration is improvised at the time of recording, the dialogue, the characters' movements, behaviors. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we don't even know what they're going to do until they do it within some broad parameters that we set up for each episode. It's definitely planned. Like we know where sure. the story is going, but we don't know like sentence by sentence. Yeah. yeah. Like a GM preparing for a game, mm. you know, you, you have a hope of where things will end up. And yeah. well, wait, isn't critical role is scripted though. Like oh yeah. Fully. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, oh, of course. See yeah. the writer's so. room. Yeah. Stacked. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, like D and D as a, as a dungeon master, you'd have a loose outline of kind of how you hope the session might go, but then you don't know what the characters are going to do. More than once we've surprised ourselves and each other, I think, and how a particular performance goes down and it's, it's, it's exciting. That's what we feel gives Mitz some of its its life in some ways. And yeah. I think every writer of characters experiences this. This is a very common experience where you think a character is going to be one way until you start writing them, until you start acting them, and then they kind of take over and show you who they are, and yeah. you just kind of have to go sure. along with mm -hmm. it. There's no forcing them. Was the, was the Nutcracker planned, or oh. was that just spontaneous legit probably the moment that like hooked me yeah <laughs> oh, i good. think the, the nutcracker, nutcracker was it was absolutely improvised yeah, I yeah remember. i'm pretty sure it was improvised i think we knew that there was some kind of gift but we didn't know what or yeah. how it would go yeah we knew he had a bag going in because that got described yeah initially, but then the yeah. only idea we had was it was some kind of uh, impersonal kind of crummy gift <laughs> that wasn't really well suited to the the recipient. Uh -huh. Yeah. But it was just so, it's so unnerving because it's Mock Weep, who, as you said, is a diabolical bastard. And then having this sound design in the background of this ice that is just cracking. <laughs> yeah, you got you oh. you add um, you add all the uh, sound effects and stuff in uh, after you record, I assume. Yes. Yeah, we're not usually performing Foley at the same time. <laughs> There's not a sound effects crunching. person who's running around with like rubber bands and, but to and Sam's, slapsticks. To Sam's point, I do think it is important to to point out to the audience that you guys do everything. You do the sound design, you do the mixing, you do the music. Yeah, who who does the music? Who does all that? Who who's well, who's the best of you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, Could you yeah. shake the teletheric around a little bit to simulate the fight we're having inside Tell the box? Us. Have a little <laughs> rumble. Oh, no. Yeah. Yes. Uh, 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 well, all the three things you mentioned are Zen. Yeah. Zen is the sound one. Yes. The yeah. sound um, one. Yes. <laughs> the sound well, person. I did. My three words for mids was fun, weird sounds. So that tells you my area of interest. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah, I, I do all the sound for mids to do the sound uh, recording and editing and uh, sound design, and I also create um, all of mids original music. And Sarah, I know you are kind of the the art maven. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. That's a good. Yeah, I'll be using that from now on. Uh, yes, until until recently, until we joined a certain a critical role, all <laughs> of the uh, art, all the visuals that went along with Midst uh, were, yeah, made by me. And now I'm in the amazing position of of um, working with all these incredible artists indirectly Yo, those through artists a veil of mystery. Are incredible, <laughs> so good. Yeah. I know, uh, I know. It's, really it's great. mind blowing. Every time, um, but not to distract from the. Oh, sorry, I just no. Go on. <laughs> go, keep going. <laughs> Oh, well, and the the other component of Mitz, I would say, are the appendices, oh. uh, the in-universe ephemera that help flesh out the story. Here's here's another uh, $5 word that I really love, verisimilitude, the quality oh, of yes. being true. Uh, the appendices help evoke that, and it is my sublime pleasure to mainly write, or at least initially write those, but in season one, Zen did a Herculean task and also helped construct and lay out and basically produce what I did as like text copy, but now it's a menu. And this one is a, a page out of a book and here's a magazine. And yeah, the appendices are kind of a group effort of writing and graphic design and illustration that uh, creates the final product that you see. Yeah, they're, they're so cool. Um, anyone who is, if you haven't checked out the appendices for Mitz, I highly recommend that you do. It really does add such depth yeah. to the entire world. It makes the world feel even more real uh, and yeah. lived in. What are some of your favorite uh, appendices that, that you three have created or, or cool oh. hidden Easter eggs in them or, or anything? 
Oh goodness. Oh boy. Well, some of our favorites are from subsequent later seasons, but for season one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, that's a great question. Uh, one of my personal favorites is from episode three, uh, the two page spread from the trusty handbook. Oh, that was yeah. such a delight to, to write and put together and help evoke what the, the trust was, how oh, the valor sure. system worked. Uh, yeah, the trust was kind of Matt's brainchild in a lot of ways. And I have to say, Matt, you really excel at this particular flavor of writing where you're just piling on the the thick bureaucrat oh, language. Thank you. It's beautiful. Oh, that fills me with such joy. Yeah, yeah we, we, we cannot overstate um, Matt's. Matt, Matt invented the trust. It is, it is due to Matt that the trust well, is in midst. So that is a huge to his credit. We all love bureau bureaucracy horror. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> uh, and it's, it, the truth is, as Sarah mentioned, you know, though we might each have our own specialties as far as you know, music, art, and writing, we do all like to get our fingers on everything. And you know, we will often go to each other if we're struggling to come up with an idea for what might go into a particular episode or develop a particular soundscape. Another excellent appendix is from. I believe it's episode nine, the crumpled letter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I think that is episode nine. Um, a crumpled there letter is. with weeps, oh, doodles it. in the margins. Cool. It's a letter that he's received and has used as a piece of scrap paper. And I just love this because it's, it's a perfect example of the weird Hydra being that we are because uh, Matt wrote the copy and Zen did the graphic design layout and Zen performs as Mach Weep in the show, but the writing and drawing of Mach Weep is Matt's handwriting. So it's the, it's this compound being that so creates cool. the fictional construct that is Mach Weep. Yes. So I love Mach Weep's doodles. They're so twisted. <laughs> I yeah. love them. That means a lot as someone who doesn't fancy themselves much of an artist. <laughs> but Did you, you is that a printed out piece of paper that you crumpled and then took a picture of? Or is it a, I think that one is some of the appendices are fully digital. Um, others later in season one started to become more actual physical props that we mm -hmm. built and then, you know, photographed. And Yeah, cool. it's a combination of stock images, but some of it is definitely photo that we took ourselves out of uh yeah. crap that was lying around our houses i do think that one that one was a physical prop that yeah, we just that's did that's so cool oh, i also like the appendices one... because they they tell you how to spell the character's names yeah and they're, and they're always <laughs> yes. so weird like yeah. even mock weeps spelling i'm like what really what okay <laughs> we gotta keep you guessing yeah yes. what were you gonna Sam, say Matt? you mentioned one other thing, the, uh, if there are any Easter eggs in oh, the yeah, appendix, yeah, yeah. that is an excellent question. And only through great midst scholarship would attentive <laughs> listeners be able to identify any hidden messages that may or may not reside within currently constructed or forthcoming. So you're not going to give up any Easter eggs. Oh, goodness, no. <laughs> can you just give Have us you a seen hint? us? Have can you seen us? Do you know how we I tell this story? Seen, I don't know what you look like. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, That's the point. <laughs> uh, can you give us a hint? Like, look for episode four, the upper right Absolutely corner. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, 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 no. Certainly not. Uh, Wouldn't dream of it. I mean, we're, we're friends. We're being friendly, but sure. no, yeah. no. I don't have to go digging for them. Maybe, Next question. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll give some hints to our subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, guys, be sure to subscribe. I'm it's sure there's information Yeah, once somewhere. it's here, where we're putting up Webster dictionary definitions. Yes, we're yes, going to come further into our paracosm. Yes, yes. yes. paracosm. Um, uh, what, what, so this is, I mean, I'm always fascinated by the process of it. Um, when you record, you you record for the, these episodes vary in length 20 minutes uh to i think what's the longest one 35 40 what's uh, 40 something i think is one of the longest ones that's available currently but so let's say you make a 25 minute episode how much like footage or tape or mm. <laughs> like how, yeah, like it's, how tape. Long it's, it's tape. physical, we, physical tape. Tape. it's how magnetic tape how long do you yeah. record to get that like does it is it eight hours of recording for 20 minutes of yeah. stuff how much, uh, how much say, hits the editing room floor yeah yeah Zen? a lot does i would say in general all most i'm speaking of season one here um most episodes of mids are about an about an hour long okay 
at oh. least uh, start to finish in recording. That's pretty tight. Yeah. That's yeah, pretty yeah. tight. And so you're just cut, cutting out ums and ahs and, yeah. and f bars. Yeah, stuff. I mean, we may, yeah. we may try some things differently or we'll recast mm-hmm. or you say, you know, Matt, what if you tried this character this time? Oh, or Sarah, cool. what if you, you know, so we, we'll we sort of... each other a bit. Yeah. We try things or we discover that we didn't really like how something went. We realize, you know what? That wasn't as cool as we thought. Let's, or let's... we'll realize that we forgot a hyper important plot element. Oh, you and got have to, you know, know, discover okay. we've yeah. painted Stuff that back in before anyone else. Yeah. Got it. You get swept up in your own story and you forget to tell it. Yeah. It's like they're making it up as they go along. <laughs> it's kind of like that. <laughs> um, and you already talked about being inspired by uh, radio theater and, and classics, uh, classic radio and stuff, but are there any uh, movies, games, uh, any, anything that sort of inspired you for this project? Mm. Any any vibes that you were vibing on? We're always absorbing vibes. Um, it's hard to pinpoint specific things because it's just so much blended together, but... I can do a personal favorite. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, at, so there is a fabulous book written by China Mieville titled Perdido Street Station that is considered, I think it's new weird is the genre yeah, that's technically. The genre. Um, it's just this lusciously written, extremely grotesque story about this bizarre city on this alien world full of crazy critters and people. And it's just this like complex, convoluted, just beautiful, beautiful story. And it's the first in a trilogy. So it's a very juicy uh, vein if you decide to embark on it. But I, I deeply remember thinking about that a lot, especially in the early days, wanting to evoke the, some of those feelings of just the grossness, the lived inness of a universe. Yeah, that was the first book that we all kind of banded around yeah. as, a, as a trio of pals. Yeah, it's a group favorite. Okay. We'll um, another recommendation. We'll, we'll right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's a very cool um, book. Another one I'd throw out there is the comic series Saga. Oh, oh yeah. I love right. saga. Yeah, yeah. So the, I mean, God, just incredible every aspect of it. And one of my favorite things about it is how um kind of unrestrainedly joyful and weird it is. Mm. It is telling a story with very deep emotional stakes and a lot of drama, but that doesn't uh, you know, restrict it from just telling stupid jokes and inventing weird one-off alien species that appear for one page and that are gone. And it's just, it's just a sensory overload of space opera madness. I love it. Unbridled. Oh, that's a a great way to put it. Sensory overload. Especially because I feel like so many people say that, like, don't do that. That's too much. What? Who but says I... that? Let me at him. Let, <laughs> let me out of this box. You can't. You're, You're not a physical you, being. You can't. Oh, sorry. There's nothing I you can do stuck. about it. So frustrating. <laughs> oh, it's lucky for us. Well, kind of going off of the art and the fact that you all were just a three person. Uh, Three person, hydra. one man show, hi- three person Hydra. Sure. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> For so long. What was it like seeing other artists jump in and uh, start to help collaborate and bring the midst world to life? Bananas. I don't know what Honest. else to compare it to except being a god, maybe. Oh. <laughs> it was unhinged. It's it was an nuts. incredible feeling. I mean, as an artist myself, I'm, you know, constantly having visual ideas, but only a very small fraction of them do I actually have the time or the energy or the talent to bring to life. And now that there are so many incredible artists creating artwork for midst all the time, it's just like, it's so rewarding. It's so incredible. A, a huge thank you to each and every artist who's who's worked yeah, on this. Yeah. It's just it's one of my favorite parts of of this whole experience, to be honest. Yeah, it's, every um, every time a new art piece comes out, we have a little company Slack. slack. Yeah, oh, yeah. we have yeah. a little screaming party. The emojis yeah. are yeah. off the handle. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. And I also love that um, there's so many different styles involved. It's not yes. like there's one artist who's the official look of mids, except me, well, I guess. But even then, then I, I've always kind of viewed my own art as just like fan art for my own thing. It's sure. it's the the thing about podcasts and the thing about um, bringing visuals to an inherently non-visual medium is 
you kind of have to decide like how important certain appearances are. And we've always been very adamant about the sanctity of the listener's imagination. Yes. We don't want to stomp on that. Sure. But at the same time, we love providing lush sensory descriptions of things. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think having all these different artists, all these different styles provides more of a mosaic or mm -hmm. a collage instead mm -hmm. of a photograph of mm -hmm. what MIDS looks like, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it's great seeing so many different, cool, amazing, skillful interpretations of MIDS from so many different styles. Mm -hmm. The truest MIDS is what exists inside your imagination when you're listening to it. I love that. So I think having a variety of artistic approaches yeah. um, kind of supports that feeling. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I would, I would agree with all that, but also volunteer if you guys need me to draw like some art that will be official. And you heard it what here. What do you want to draw, Sam? Okay. Yeah. You were on Pub Draw once. I was so bad. <laughs> well, um, make us a pitch and, and we'll review it. Okay, yeah. Good. How about that? <laughs> I, I do love, like, to your point, Sarah, there are so many different varying styles of artists across everyone that we've brought on. Um, but I think one of the things that is connective is there are very strong color palettes in yeah. all of them. It's very, it's very bright, it's very colorful which I, you know, I'm obsessed with that choice because I think it's really easy when you think of, especially like sci-fi, mm -hmm. Western, horror, it's easy to revert to like a very desaturated monochromatic color palette. I feel that. Um, so yeah, what was, did, was there anything that inspired that? Um, yeah, I, I like colors <laughs> and Perfect I didn't answer. want to trap myself into an indefinite future of drawing desaturated Western palettes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's basically the answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes all the yeah, sense. And you know, it's a, it's a lively cosmos. It's, it's very vibrant yeah. and crazy and it's full of weird realms. So having everything be um, kind of lusciously colorful as it was an, early choice of ours when Sarah was originally creating all of MIDS uh, er, first art. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. You, we were mentioning, you know, some of those different uh, like inspirations or influences that might have factored into the creation of MIDS. And I think in, in the course of telling the story, something we found to be very satisfying was putting it all together in the style of almost like a roller coaster, mm -hmm. you know, the high points, are amazing where you get that perspective but then you go shooting down into a dark place and then suddenly again you're you're emerging onto the scene again i feel like with the then the, you throw up a little oh, bit yeah that 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 <laughs> rich textural you know multicolored journey that you go on like getting to see dark moments where characters are in shadow makes those scenes where it's a vibrant cityscape so much more like profound and meaningful and and rich it i don't know that's I feel like that roller coaster analogy is really important to me, so that's why I said it. <laughs> that's great. I love it. It brings our paracosm to life. Yes, that's right. Um, and when you when you got to see the artwork and the presentation of the show for the first time, uh, did it give you the warm fuzzies? Do you have any favorite art pieces from season one uh, that that spoke to you? Don't make Boy, me pick it's like, favorites. It's like Christmas favorite. every day, Sam, when these, when these art pieces come in. Um, I mean, oh, there was something very special about seeing the art for the first episode because it was the first time sure. that kind of thing had ever happened to us. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, 100%. It was just it, beyond our wildest imaginings of what could be possible. Um, and we got two versions of it. I'm thinking of the uh, the piece oh, of yes. Lark's Cabin that you see it, yeah. in unlight and uh, in the fold. Yeah. And it was just... It was, I'm kind of struggling to come up with the words for it. Um, yeah. yeah, and the original art itself is spectacular it enough, is. but but add to that the incredible skillful work of uh, Critical Role's animators yeah. to bring these to life with subtle movement and especially the great transition at the end of this episode where the fold wipes over revealing daytime. Yeah, mm -hmm. I consider Just... the animators working on all these pieces just as much and equal parts in the artistry as the illustrators because yeah. some of the Ooh, things there it is. are doing is it just it's it's beautiful yeah absolutely yeah. i also i have to just say lark's cabin 
that's like a dream. That's my like cottage core fantasy. Yes. Yeah. Oh Give me that cabin there. in Joshua Tree. That with with all the metal bars all, on the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. well, that might be keep... where we're speaking to you from tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can say. Yes. But it's still Second like ones. within driving distance of a city. You know, you can still order sushi. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and you need a weird motorcycle too, Marisha. You've got to have that. How, you know, how else oh. to get around? I'll talk to Matt. <laughs> we can arrange something. He, he's, he's terrified I'm going to die. We've had this conversation. Just of motorcycles or just of, of everything? Well. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, uh, mortality. Ah, uh, death. <laughs> yep. uh, oh, what grim fate awaits us all. <laughs> um, you mentioned being in an undisclosed location. Um, we're not going to give away what that is. Mm -hmm. I don't even really know. I'm sure I was told, but I've forgotten because I, I don't pay attention much. Somewhere in the fold. Yeah. Um, yes. But w the Actually, teletheric uh, transmissions don't work from within the fold. They become distorted and warped. Oh, so it's impossible well. for us to be speaking to you from oh, within the fold right now because uh, of the in well, now world they've... canon of our There's universe. There's so much cosmology to, to remember. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, I was going to say uh, the anonymity factor for for you three. Mm. Um, you mentioned earlier your 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 nervousness or stage fright is what inspired it. Or shyness. What, well, yeah, shyness. <laughs> is that is that is that it? Is is it a? Uh, is there anything more to it than that? Is there some sort of deep psychological things we can delve into <laughs> right now, or is it oh, just- Oh, their connection's breaking up. Uh... Oh, this is, see, are you there? Are you still hearing us? I think we lost them, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they are in the fold. <laughs> Uh, well, Marisha, you said something um, uh, a short time ago that was actually connected to the anonymity thing. Um, a little bit of it is that we're shy, but really a big part of it too is that MIDS is not really about us. And from day one, we all kind of had a realization that th the show is not about us as performers. You know, we're not we're not industry actors. We're not um, we don't have sort of a personal, perf you know, a theater or film brand that we are working on building. And so it's 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 partly due to that, just that the, the, the work is about mids. Mm -hmm. It's not about the people performing it. Yeah. To all the commenters trying to guess who we are, I, I promise you, you. You have not heard of us, <laughs> <laughs> unless you know us in real life. It is, it is. The, they use the stage names Zen, Matt, and Sarah. It's actually Beyonce, mm. The Weekend. Oh yes, and Matt Mercer. Yes. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just stuck with Matt. Matt is just Matt. Uh, right. <laughs> but yeah, fun, fun fact: not all indie podcasters are extroverts, and uh, yeah. I I don't know if the anonymity thing will be a forever thing. But for mm -hmm. now, I am very grateful to be hanging back in my comfort zone and watching this whole thing unfold and and slowly unfold. acclimating to the idea mm -hmm. that um, people are aware of my work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in the early, early days when we were first deciding like, oh, maybe we could make this a podcast. How do we uh, how do we want to share that? We really just had this like small group of friends, I think, as kind of our target audience, so to speak, mm. that we were kind of creating it for. And, you know, that it 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 grew beyond that and, and came across Critical Role's radar was just sort of like a, whoa, wait, wah, this, this weird <laughs> thing that we were doing in our off hours that was literally like a hobby we crammed in around our other day jobs, like I don't, brain melting. Going off the day jobs thing, by the way, because you guys don't have those anymore. You <laughs> are doing nope. this full time. Amazing. Welcome to the club. It is amazing. Of Thank, being you. Thank you. Weirdo, yeah. Thank weirdo you for storytellers. This happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's a kind of a shift. <laughs> yeah, what is it what's it like been uh shifting into that weirdo storyteller uh position full time and uh was it was it weird? Very yeah. very weird. It continues to be weird. I keep worrying that I'm going to get a call from an old manager that's like, "Where have you been?" <laughs> <laughs> what do you think you're doing? But, you're, you're five weeks late to the meeting. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm still reasonably convinced it's possible I've crashed on my bicycle and I'm in a coma and none of this is real. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we we like it is our answer and are incredibly, incredibly grateful for, I mean, this is like every indie podcaster's dream. 
and it happened to us. It's happening right now. And I just try to remind myself of that fact every day. And it's um, because there's still, obviously there's a lot of work. There's a lot of stress mm -hmm. yeah. because I care very much about my job now. And that has not always been the case. Yeah. So as a result, I kind of have no other option in my soul, but to, to give it my all preach. Yes. Yeah. I, <laughs> frankly, the, the biggest boon, I think, of being able to work on it full time or now in excess of full time, if we want, is just is that it is that gift of time and being able to really give this the attention and care that we, we want to. I, it's worth sharing a, a little anecdote in season one, we really set ourselves up with this Ulysses contract of releasing an episode and an appendix. You can run the definition for a Ulysses contract oh, at the bottom. Yeah, basically, yes. <laughs> well, we, I, I can't see it. <laughs> basically, yeah, we, we told people that we were going to come out with all of this content on a weekly basis, an episode icon, an episode fully scored with sound effects and voices and like pristine editing. There was going to be an appendix accompanying each episode. Unique icon art to accompany every episode as well. Yeah. And so when we were like, okay, the only way this is going to get done is if we give ourselves a deadline and tell people that we're doing this on a deadline, we quickly discovered that like, oh, oh no, <laughs> we have a deadline. We have to, we have to knock this out. Like now it's Thursday night. We were uploading this. Like it's, it's just, yeah, it was crazy in those early years. <laughs> Do you yeah, guys the feel first... like you work well on deadlines? Sure. Yeah, they they help things move <laughs> sure. along at speed. It's sure. nice. Why not? I mean, you it, tell it, us. it caused Mitz to happen. It, it wouldn't. Did, yeah. It wouldn't be here. That, otherwise. That's a very good point. Yeah. The seven years that we mentioned, uh, part of that is because we no one was expecting anything of us. We were yeah, at we our leisure deadlines. to polish and refine this pie in the sky idea in our minds for as long as we pleased. But there came a point where we just had to be like, okay, guys, are we gonna do the thing or are we not gonna do the thing? We have to. We have to post something. <laughs> and once you start posting, you know. Yeah, the posting can't stop after that. No, no. once you post, you, you just can't, can't stop. stop. Nah, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and it's bad. Uh, well, before we move on, because I want to, uh, I want to talk about season two and all the stuff that you guys can maybe give the some little teasers for. But before mm, we do that, yes. uh, we have some more art that I would oh, love yes, to feature. Please. Yes. Yeah feature the let's art. go back to the art there's just, there's so much it, it's so uh painful even picking out which to <laughs> which to feature on the screen at this moment um just start calling we, some out just okay can we look up. at episode five sam bosma it's a beautiful like where's waldo scene of stationary hill um, packed with characters packed with details packed with little critters yes. little alien yes. critters can you zoom in on that that bug thing that's carrying a shopping bag yeah oh yeah right there in the middle yeah. Enhanced. yeah Enhanced. incredible so yes. cool so good. just unbelievable Epic. truly magical those cool little birds little mm -hmm. alien mm -hmm. bird dinosaurs <laughs> and um yes another kind of similarly detail-packed one is the the gala episode uh annalise jensen did the art for that one it's this beautiful pastel paradise of oh, yeah. oh. Tour fashion mm -hmm. and oh my gosh beautiful architecture and and cherry blossoms and it's just so gorgeous yeah, yeah the level of detail in this fashion too every single yes. one of the oh look at all these fits the style oh, is <laughs> Oh. And you can see sad Phineas there in the back in the yeah. background. And a little spar too. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want to go to there. I know. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. I want We're to go to that party. Start a new fashion trend. Midst core. Yep. <gasps> oh yeah. my gosh. Could you? Could you? Sure. sure. <laughs> We're doing it right now. Get on it, <laughs> cosplayers. Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one more art piece I, I just got to mention is for episode 12, Coda, by Lenka Simakova. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, it's sure this you beautifully, you were asking about colors earlier, this beautifully neon saturated oh, jazz yes. club vibe. It's the Black Candle Cabaret and it's it's just it's incredible it's the, the technical yeah. detail and all the the just fine de like on the in the, those feathers yeah, on the yeah. the character in the foreground the the boa that they're wearing it's amazing and also yeah. i i gotta say this is one of the like hotter weeps on record <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hot weep true yes 
Yeah, that tight, that tight fitted button down. Yeah, I know. Nice. He's bursting out of his shirt. <laughs> yeah, 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 he is. He's been in the gym. Yeah. I also like yeah. the, uh, the instrument. Even the musical instruments are like they're just a little different from real yeah. instruments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little fantasy. Super, it's great. Super cool. Yeah, one of my favorite pieces is uh, it is a, a, a day and night duo scene by Will Kirkby um, featuring uh, Fuse's cabin. Mm -hmm. Just yes. uh, this, oh. there are many depictions of mids that we've seen in a lot of these art pieces, but this one in particular, the redness of the rocks, the the snarliness of the sandstone texture, the 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 detail is just off the charts. It's it's and so alien, yeah. and vivid. Yes. Oh, and yeah, night scene is just rich. yeah stunning and we've we've had the pleasure to um get art from will kirkby uh multiple times and every single one is just a banger yeah including this garage scene as well yes. which uh, will kirkby also illustrated for a later episode which and perhaps uh, more to come who can say who Man. can say it's so incredible oh uh, yes the, the just garage. the detail the, the <laughs> <girl> Joe's <laughs> garage yes. That's so great. Yeah. <laughs> the little cat there the bocular poster on the wall mm -hmm. yes alluding yeah, I mean, to one of our appendices oh that is one of my favorite appendices like too yeah too. all the detail and so all cool. those shelves and all the cubbies Ugh. Mm -hmm. oh <laughs> yeah you asked earlier what are some of our favorite appendices this one's mine <laughs> this one just kills Box. me <laughs> whatever, whatever it, is, it is it can happen, can happen. <laughs> That's what. That's good. To, Need it? Get it. It will. Good, yeah. to, good to get a tattoo of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, when uh, looking at those pictures, uh, I don't want to give away any information about who you are, or where you live, mm. but can you at least give us a, a tantalizing detail about each of you? Like, do you live in a place like that, or is it a snowy mountain, or is it a do you live mm. on a boat that travels the Pacific, or do you, mm. you know, sure. or, or do you, or do you, are, do you, do you, are you herders? <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah she, you, she it sounds herders? like you know, Sam. You I should just know. tell us. Yeah, yeah. yeah keep <laughs> guessing. Create are, my biography. Are, are you are you Irish people with yes. very convincing American accents? Ooh, yeah, they're they're yes. making uh, they're making Scotch in the hills. <laughs> yes, mm. are you, those were our are those are day jobs. Are you Highlanders? <laughs> Yeah. The distraction is working, guys. Yes. Keep him guessing. Keep him talking. <laughs> we'll run out of time before we have to just close our location. Yeah. Uh, no, we we could we could uh we could part with a detail or two, I suppose. Oh, so it doesn't have to be location based. That was no, just the only thing that. that Sam could come up with in the moment. I guess. Are you in England? Are you in Scotland? Are you uh, in Wales? Look, if you want to come over and hang hobbies. out, you just have to ask. Yeah. Well, what's, a, what's a tantalizing hobby? Do they have pets? There's other things. But besides yes. what country are your sure. pets in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what street language address are, are they? Uh, <laughs> yes. Well, we cannot disclose our location to you other than being in another paracosm that is different from uh, the one that you're speaking sure, to us in sure. right now. But yeah. uh, we can we can share a couple uh, personal hobbies or interests, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can go first. Uh, I am very, 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 very much a fan of video games. Ooh, video games. Video games of video all sizes. Games. Is that like a bocular amusement? In in a way, yes. It's something that can be presented on a screen. I'll show you later. Is, but... it, how, is it like a podcast <laughs> for your hands? And your face, yes. <laughs> Amazing. It's exquisite. Uh, no, there are so many marvelous ways to spend one's time, and I really do like to be indoors and on a screen. <laughs> but sure. maybe the window's open so I can get some fresh air during oh. my Oh, well, you live in a place with fresh air, do you? Okay. Oh, and you window. Oh, right. revealed too much. Oh. Oh. Quick, one of you go. Yeah. Um, uh, hobbies, <laughs> sure, that's good. Um, I really like perfume. That's a fun oh. fact about me. I a particularly um, unusual sense from niche and indie brands, and I, I keep spreadsheets that. of all the perfumes I've ever sampled. Whoa. No way! And confirm. I'm I'm pretty pretty uh, serious about it. Amazing. Wow. Wait. Do you have you ever made your own perfume? Is that something you oh, might want to no, get into? Oh no. I wish. I would love to. But that. Per, what is like, the tool called? Oh, there's a tool called a perfumer's organ that um, I guess oh, no. perfume. Perfumers in perfume school use that kind of separates out all uh, these common individual scent components and lets you learn what they do solo and in combination. Wow. It's pretty cool. interesting so stuff. So cool. I know what I'm getting you for the holidays. I know. You'll oh. just need to give me an address to send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> the postmaster at the Mids post office will be in touch. Sarah, you should make your own perfume. Yeah. 
That would be so I, cool. I mean, hmm. I'm not not interested in that. Chanel number six. <laughs> uh, Zen, what, what can you tell us about, about, about you. yourself? Yeah, I um, I I do enjoy um, TTRPG games. I like experimental storytelling games. And one of my main hobbies outside of uh, doing midst and and also doing a lot of strange and weird music on my own outside of scoring the show uh, is to invent and play weird kind of one of a kind unique uh, story games. Sometimes mm. system light, systemless. Um, but I love and for many years have enjoyed um, lots of weird and wild gaming in a lot of weird experimental formats with a lot of friends, including the the others here in third person making mids, but also um, with other uh, creative folks as well. So, yeah, weird and weird and unusual kind of off the cuff niche, strange role playing is a, is a fun hobby awesome. of mine. That's cool. That's a good. That's a good hobby to have. You know, Zen, yeah. I don't know oh, if yes, you're familiar Marisha? with Darrington Press. Oh, Jesus. It's possible. It's ringing a bell, you know, know, now that you, you ever, mention it. You want to collab. Uh, oh, man, our people will talk to your people. It could be, yeah. 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 <laughs> and it may not come as a surprise that as the sound designer, uh, musician of Midst, I like to do a lot of immersive kind of multimedia sound and audiovisual stuff with the games that I create as well. So that's so cool. my hobby. Brad. So cool. Um, are we supposed to wrap up now? Is it, have we reached the end of our time? Is well, that... I mean, yeah, we we're should... almost out of magnetic tape. Oh, in there. oh, that's, <laughs> oh my gosh, we don't want to get cut off. You... But before that, yes. I think just a little bit, um, a little bit about season two. Yeah, we should tease the the next season. It's yes. coming up soon. What can you tell the folks? What can they expect without giving away too many spoilers about season two? Well, we have a fun line we like to tell people, which we have uh, used in the past and we'll use here again. Uh, season one of Midst was, surprise, just the tutorial level. Ooh. Oh, that's a good way to put it. Season yeah. one uh, is setting you up for the real story to truly begin with season two. Season one exists just to teach you what's going on and where it's happening. How it yeah. works. Who the players are. But now you know, and now it's time to really blast off. Now it's time to put them in some situations. <laughs> <laughs> there will be some uh, situations. Several, in fact. Oh Before God. they were yeah. merely events, but yeah. now, <laughs> now, situations. Now they've now gradually scenarios. Blown scenarios. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Weird happenings. Uh, deep, strange adventures. Things are going to get uh, exciting and intense in some new and unusual ways. Yeah. We'll yeah. be going to some new places. We'll be spending more time in places we've already seen. Places we have not seen. Mm. That Who places? can say? This is exciting. Um, I, uh, that's amazing. This has been amazing to talk to you and get insight into everything. Before we leave, I just had an unrelated question. If there was a show starring me and Marisha where we just <laughs> talk to radios about various <laughs> things, would you guys watch that? Is that a show that we should do? Yeah, is this feeling good? Are we the radio in this scenario, <laughs> or is it just like it be, other radios? Are you seeing radios. other radios? Yeah. Well, yeah. What's, wait, yeah. What other radios do you hang out with? You better explain. Well, technically, this is a teletheric That's transducer. True. Totally yeah, it's not a radio thing. Thing. This at isn't all, as like you can see. A normal run of your regular mill radio. This yeah. is a pretty fancy science fiction fantasy. But to answer your question, I think it's a great show format. Okay. I would watch the heck out of that. Right. Yes. We got one approval, <laughs> one green light. This is our pilot. Yeah, and if in the future. I, can't, I don't have a green light, actually. It's all red. Yeah, yeah and if in the future we can oh, maybe no. guest on a <laughs> session of Critical Role, you can sit this transducer at a chair at the table and we'll just yell yeah. things and somebody else can move pieces and roll yeah. dice for us. We'll just knock a dice off off the top of yeah, it. For you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe if we shout loud enough, the sound vibrations will knock Ooh, the dice yeah. over. Like as long as Matt describes everything that's going on with a lot of detail and he does it while shouting the whole time we should be good <laughs> maybe we could come up with some like um remote dice oh yeah. dice flipper like a dice little... pusher yeah just cool. build us robotic arms great. please great. you know my nose itches so bad <laughs> so you do have a nose is what you're saying no arms left. goodbye <laughs> no, <I don't>. oh. <laughs> um thank you all so much uh a uh, big round of, of teletheric applause to matt sarah and zen for joining us tonight on our midst round table uh this is a round table it works it is yeah um midst season two premieres august 23rd on midst.co yeah. the critical role youtube channel and everywhere you listen to podcasts new episodes will be available every wednesday subscribers whom we love 
on midst.co. We'll get the first three episodes right away. Non-subscribers, you're okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> new episodes are available every Wednesday. Don't forget, I think I said that twice. Yeah. Uh, it's take good to a drill sound. it in. I'd say uh, let's close it out by taking a look at the Midst Season 2 trailer. Whoa. Whoa. Take it away. You're going to love it. Check it out. Here we go. Hello. It's us. We're back. Real quick spoiler warning. If you have not listened to Season 1 of Midst, you're going to want to stop here. Seriously. We'll give you three seconds. All right. You've been warned. So, you may be asking yourself, What the hell? Why the fuck did the moon explode? What's gonna happen to utterly doomed midst and everybody trapped on it by an incoming wave of reality-devouring fog? Are Lark and Zila gonna be okay? Are they gonna figure out that Sherman's not dead? What's Phineas gonna do now that he's been abandoned by the Trust, the very institution that raised him and gave him purpose and his sense of self-worth, and, like, what is he gonna do? Will Jonas Spar do the right thing? What even is the right thing? What is Imelda's deal? Why did the Trust even bother rescuing Mockweep, even though he's this weird sleazeball piece of shit who stabbed his closest friends in the back. And what is a mirror hawk? What is a bocular horse? What is going on with Weep's voice? Is Landlord gonna die? No. Okay, we, we will tell you this one. Landlord is not going to die. We're unreliable narrators, not monsters. Why did Lark kill Fuse? What is she trying to hide? Is the Nutcracker okay? Will the rapidly depreciating value of Valor ever restabilize, or is the market doomed to implode? Is the trust bad? Did Saskia's dogs really eat the melted corpse of enterprising businessman Atticus Concord? Do the narrators even know what happens next? No. We have no idea. Just kidding. We know. And when season two of Midst unfolds, August 23rd, you will know as well. In the meantime, for bonus episodes, merch, media, and more, visit midst.co. And don't forget to stock up on light bulbs. You might need them where we're going.